Awk provides a lot of useful functionality for working with text files at command line, especially in the context of filtering files. I won't cover nearly all aspects of Awk here, but we'll hit some of its features that I find most helpful. We'll talk about the general structure of Awk expressions and some of the important variables, functions, and commands that are built into the Awk language. Let's first preview the example file that we'll work with. In this case, it's a tab-delimited text file with five columns and a thousand rows of data. The columns include a generic sample name for each sample, US state name abbreviations, month, and then two columns of measurements. I generated these data by sampling randomly from defined distributions, so they don't have any real meaning beyond serving as an example or using awk. You can download the data file from the link pasted in a comment pinned to this video if you want to use it to follow along. While the file has a matrix-like row-by-column structure, that format is not absolutely necessary, and awk can work with any plain text file. Let's start looking at the structure of an awk statement and initially think of it as having three parts, and then we'll build on those a bit more as we go along. The first of the three is simply the awk command itself. The second is bounded by a set of single quotes and consists of one or more actions that will be performed, each of which is enclosed in curly brackets. The third section is the name of the file you're going to apply any actions to. So for our three sections, two are really straightforward, the awk command itself and the name of the file to work on. The action block in the middle is where there are a number of options, so we'll focus most of our attention there. Let's start with what's, at least for me, probably the most widely used function in awk, print. On the command line, we start with awk, followed by a single quote that indicates the beginning of the action block, and then we define the specific action in curly brackets, here, print, and then close the action block with another single quote. We'll apply this to the file test awk data .text and I'm going to pipe the results to the head function so that it just returns the first five lines of the output. In this case, the output looks just like the first five lines of the original file. Awk opened the file and started reading down through it one line at a time, and for each line it performed the action, which in this case was simply to print the line. In practice, that probably won't be all that useful, but let's extend it by taking advantage of some positional variables that are built into Awk. These each start with a dollar sign, they're numbered sequentially, and they correspond to the different fields in each line of text that awk reads. Here, I've added two positional variables, separated with a comma, that limit the output of the print function to just columns one and three. Let's extend this action block a little further. We can add a conditional statement to limit the output to just certain lines. There are several ways to do this, but maybe the most intuitive is with an if statement. Here, I'm restricting the action to only apply to lines for which the third field, the month, is January, and I'm printing the third, second, and fourth fields in that order. Likewise, we can filter for entries where the measure to column is greater than or equal to 70. Notice the header line gets printed this time, which means awk is interpreting the string measure to, which is the fifth field of the first line, to be greater than 70. I think what's happening here is that measure 2 and 70 are being compared as strings, and the sequence of alphanumeric characters goes from numbers to capital letters to lowercase letters, and so the M in measure 2 is interpreted as greater than the 7 in 70. Also note, I used another positional variable here, dollar sign $0, which has a special meaning, to simply print the entire line, and actually has the same effect as using the print function by itself with no positional variables. However, note that there is a slight difference in using the dollar sign zero variable versus indicating each of the fields individually, as I'm doing here with dollar sign one through dollar sign five. The fields that get printed don't change. They all get printed either way, but the character used to separate those fields may change. With the dollar sign zero notation, the fields in the output will be separated with whatever is used in the original file, while when the fields are sp specified individually, the output fields will be separated with whatever the output field separator variable in awk is set to. By default, it's a space. We'll return to the field separator variable shortly, but first let's look at an alternative to the if statement for filtering. Simpler syntax can be used to achieve the same thing by placing a conditional statement just before the curly brackets for a given action. For example, we can perform the same filter of measure two values greater than or equal to 70 by simply putting the dollar sign five greater than or equal to 70 expression 
in front of the curly brackets to replace the if statement that we had inside the curly brackets before. While we're looking at conditionals in front of the curly brackets, it's a good time to consider two special variables that are built into awk, begin and end. Remember that awk will read through a file one line at a time and will perform any specified actions on each line. However, you can also define actions that are executed prior to the first line being read or after the last line is read, using the begin or end variables respectively. Let's look at these in the context of two other important variables that came up earlier, the field separator, which is denoted fs, and the output field separator, which is denoted ofs. Here, I'm adding a second action block that changes the value of the output field separator from the default, which is a space, to a comma. I'll use the begin variable to indicate that this variable should be set prior to the first line of the file being read. In this case, the output would be the same if, if the begin statement was left off, though behind the scenes, what happens is a little different. As if it's left off, the output field separator would repeatedly be set to comma each time a new line is read, instead of just a single time before the first line of the file gets read. We could also use the begin statement to print a new line of text at the beginning of the file. For example, let's say we wanted to add a line at the top of the file to record the date that we were doing the work. We can do this with the print function by specifying the string we want printed and put this in a begin statement, as I've done here. Note the first line of text that was added to the output. In addition to the standard logical expressions such as equal to, greater than, less than, etc., awk also recognizes extended regular expressions for filtering lines. The tilde character is used to test whether a field contains some regular expression, which is indicated by putting it inside a pair of forward slashes. Here, I'm printing only lines for which the month starts with a capital M, so data from either March or May. The opposite is obtained by putting an exclamation point in front of the tilde. Before we wrap up, I'll highlight just a couple more variables in awk that you're likely to find useful. nf, which stores the number of fields on a line, and nr, which stands for the number of records, and basically keeps track of the line number that awk is on as it reads through a file. Here, I'm printing the record number prior to the reading the first line, and then again after the last line of the file is read. Remember, this file has a thousand data entries plus a header line. One more thing to keep in mind with awk is that, similar to said, no changes are made to the contents of the original file that's read. This means that in most cases, you're probably going to redirect the output from awk to either a new file or possibly pipe it into a subsequent command. As I said earlier, there's more to awk than what I've presented here, but hopefully this is enough to allow you to start to take advantage of some of the functionality that awk offers, and also enough that if there are other things you need awk for, you'll have enough of the basics that you can pick up those additional functions on your own from places like aux documentation or online tutorials.